So I feel like we should say welcome back because uh, we've not been back together on camera since last time, but we've seen each other loads. So oh, of course, yeah. instead of welcome back to you at home, welcome back to you because you've just come back from the Amazon. I have indeed. And couldn't let it go without having an interview with you and, and find out what's been going off. Absolutely. I've seen your photos of your luxury hotels and, you know, living the high life, but not really seen much of the actual jungle stuff. That's right, yeah. Yeah, good point. So, before we get into the nitty gritty of what you've been up to, you know, and how it's gone, let's have a chat first about what that jungle ultra is. Like, how long is it? How does it work? How does that that kind of get planned? Okay, yeah. So it's a five-day self-sufficient race across the well through the Amazon rainforest in Manu National Park in Peru. Uh, so when I say self-sufficient, um, when you get to um, the first camp, base camp, which starts at altitude about four thousand feet, um, you're on your own basically. Like obviously you've got medics and that to look after you through the way and checkpoints only for water, but um, you've got to carry everything in your pack. Um, so basically you sleep in a hammock overnight. Right. So you have to put that up yourself at every checkpoint every day over the five days to take it down in the morning, repack it into its dry bag so it doesn't get wet. If you've obviously got river crossings and then in that pack, you've got your medical kit, you've got your food, you've got any change of clothes and other bits and bobs. And you've got other like ancillary bits and bobs of compulsory equipment you have to take and you can get checked. Right. And your pack could weigh anything between like seven and 10 kilos. Really? Which, yeah. Which makes a massive difference when it's on the back and yeah. you're going through that kind of territory. So it is self-sufficient. And then when you get back to each camp every day, you get your freeze dried food out, they provide hot water and then you just rehydrate it and eat that and, you know, take care of your feet and everything else. Yeah. Sleep and wake up and do it all over again over five days. <laughs> so how, yeah. long, how long are you running for in a day? So the, the race itself, it's, um, it's around 230 kilometers, so you know, like 140 miles or something, but it's very hard to measure out jungle miles. And, and when you think of a jungle mile, you know, it, it could take an incredibly long time to do one mile if you're in deep jungle. Mm. So um, um, it's spread over the five days, and you roughly sort of, you could roughly say like a marathon a day, and then, you know, 40 odd miles on the last day. Yeah. So to save that, like the last day is the toughest because it's longer and there's like loads of hills and yeah. other things to catch you out. Yeah. So that's how it works. So, and obviously you're at altitude as well. You start at altitude. Right. Yeah. Which can be a problem for some. Um, you know, one guy didn't start the race because he had a um, pulmonary edema, so he couldn't even start the race. And, and I know that he's a fine athlete, so you know, it's, it's, you know, it doesn't matter how fit you are with mm. altitude; he can just get hold of you. So. You know, I'm sure that I went out there a week early just to get used to that. Because believe me, when I landed in Cusco, the city, which is three and a half thousand feet, it just felt like an old man walking into R town. Really? Was, like double breathing all the time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's awful. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we are pretty high up here, though. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Country See Arnold. There, like, yeah, Arnold yeah, down, down there. there. <laughs> we are guys, yeah. So, um, obviously, this isn't the first time you've tackled the... Jungle. No, no, it's not. Talk us through the last time and, and the kind of what you were carrying with you, not just your pack, yeah. but what you were carrying with you emotionally and mentally. Yeah, the last time, um, I was coming off the back of some good races. Uh, but I did have a bit of a layoff and, um, and I wanted to get back into things. And I saw this race and I thought, yeah, that's for me. You know, and I competed in various other tough races around the world. And I just went into this race fitter than I am now, actually, uh, but probably carrying my ego a little bit more, thinking, yeah, I could smash this, I could do really well, you know, maybe grab first place Brit or something. Yeah. And just, yeah, I just went in it with the wrong attitude and, you know, ran my ego and not my heart and soul. And after three days, I just blew up, um, crossed the finish line after day three, and I woke up with medics around me and on drips. Yeah, there's the photo, I'm going to show that photo mm. now, yeah. but... That that picture of you, I can remember seeing it because I was, I was in bed and it got posted while I was in bed. Really, and I remember thinking, "Geez, he looks yeah. like he's gonna die. Like yeah. you look like a skeleton on I the know, floor." No, just sucked the life out of me. And, it, and, and you, you've got the jungle in the background and you're lying on the floor. Yeah, we're in, the was, we're in a good yeah, place. Like, and I know you don't, <laughs> you don't give in. 
Mm. So you just push yourself to the point of collapsing instead of saying, I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've got all of that kind of, um, that weighing on you. And I know from, you know, knowing you sin all, the, all our lives, but knowing mm. you talking since then, that's that's been a thing that's been there. Yeah, yeah, really A demon has. there. Yeah, you know, I've experienced DNS in a couple of other races before. And it's part and parcel of it. It's like a boxer. They're going to experience loss. You know, in lots of sport, you're going to experience loss. You know, and um, and I have, but that like, I've just struggled to deal with. You know, there's only one. There's only one thing to do, and that was to make a comeback. Yeah. for that one. Sure. Brilliant. So you've done lots of like ultra marathons. Yeah. You've you know you've had the attempt at rowing the Pacific Ocean. Mm. You've run the marathon de Sable and ran through mm. the through the desert yeah how does this race compare to those other races uh it's the, it's the toughest race in the world it's the toughest foot race in the world it's it's it has to be you know there's an article in the daily mail and i think it got a bit of kudos for, for being the potential toughest race in the world I'm pretty sure chris the race director will like having that <laughs> tagline yeah. to it and you know and i have a lot of experience in ultras and i met a lot more in the jungle that also got a lot of experience and we all agreed that we haven't done anything tougher than this, and I don't think we will do. So what, we go back. What made it particularly tough? You just because I mean, running the mm. running in the in the desert through sand can't be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's not all sand. You know, it's a bit of dunes and a lot of rocky um, terrain. You're in the baking heat of the day, and you just cannot escape it. There's no shade, and it's it's very hard with the heat. So what about so with the jungle being harder than that? Yeah. What made that particularly? Well, difficult? you know, you've got when you are exposed, like on the on the tracks and away from the jungle, the deep jungle, then you're exposed to, you know, like, in the coca fields and that is very, very hot. And then, then you're in the jungle and the jungle's just, like, it just crushes you. It's like, being in, it's like, like, just working out on a sauna or something. It's just constantly, it feels like it's coming over you and, like, just grabbing hold of you. And, like, you're constantly wet with the humidity. But then you're not just battling that, you're battling doing that in, like, Se like severe incline so really you know like there's two mountains in it we had to climb oh and it's and it's you know it's it's ridiculously hard getting up them but coming down them you know like it's so technical and there's so many falls i mean a, you know one guy fell and he got his backpack pinned to a tree oh and you know God. below him would have been a hefty drop you know there's so many risks and you're concentrating all the time so you got the humidity you got the heat you got river crossings you got creepy crawlies you're forever like Sometimes you've got to grab stuff to pull yourself up and you've got ants coming all up. You're biting your hands and your ankles. Oh. And so you can't stop to take a breath because if you do in certain places, you yeah. can have like wildlife all over you. <laughs> oh and, then, you know, <laughs> and then you've got river crossings with great big boulders in them and there was one section of the last day where there was probably about 5K of river that you're not, you're not you had to walk across. You had to actually walk down it. And it's just, it was so hard to make progress through that. And when you've beaten up over yeah. four days anyway, and then this, there wasn't one easy section of this, this race at all. So, you know, like, I mean, for me, I, I, we went camping at the weekend and I, I'm not built for camping, <coughs> but I find it really difficult if I'm, if, if I stay in a hotel, I find it difficult because I'm not used to, like, I'm, you know, you're used to your own creature comforts, your yeah, own bed. Yeah. So how are you, is it just pure exhaustion that gets you straight to, you know, you're getting straight to sleep when you're in the jungle. I imagine, for me, I imagine it's going to would keep me awake, the noises, the mm. heat, the not sleeping on a proper bed. Like, what's that like at night? Well, I can't speak for everybody else, but personally, I, like, hammocks are very comfortable. But I have to sleep on my front, yeah. and you can't sleep on your front no, in a hammock. You my, splash I'll, your spine Because I just, <laughs> yeah, wreck my spine. <laughs> and, um, so... I just like catnap throughout the night. And the noises of the jungle are quite, you know, once you've been in the jungle for a couple of days, you settle into it. Yeah. And you don't care about the ants. You don't care about the noises in the bushes and that. And you sort of like respect and appreciate your surroundings. And it, it's, for me, it was, it was nice. But, you know, I'd sleep for probably half an hour awake, sleep for an hour awake, and that's how it yeah. was. And you wake up absolutely tired, you know, but you've got a job to do and you get on with it. So you're just like catnapping all night. Yeah. And is that how you approach it? Like, I mean, there must have been times, if it's that hard, there mm. must have been times where you're like, God, I've got to get up and do it. Or, you know, you're running through, like, hours at a time running through really difficult terrain. Is that the attitude that you take with it? Is it you've got a job to do? Or are you having to talk yourself through? Is there times when you're having to talk yourself through it? 
Well, I mean, yeah, I guess it is a job to do, but um, and obviously I woke up tired every morning, but um, you know, it was. I also looked forward to it. This time around was so different. Yeah. Like I actually looked forward to getting up in the morning and doing my things. That, um, yes, the race is ridiculously hard. You know, personally, you know, I do feel like it is the toughest foot race in the world. But I was looking, and I think that helped me. You know, I was looking forward to the next day. Yeah. I felt like I was getting, because I had two very steady days. I yeah. was at the back for day one and day two, taking it steady and enjoying myself. But when I woke up on day three, I was, felt really good. And like I said, I was looking forward to it. And then going into day four and the last day, just, yeah, it was a job I had to do. But it was, I think, looking forward to it. I yeah. get through it. Mm. So did, did you consciously approach it in a different way to last time? Did, did you like reflect on what you did last time? Oh, and yeah, consciously? Yeah, yeah, totally different. I mean, for me last time, uh, hydration, electrolytes, you know, lack of salts finished me. Yeah. I just didn't know what fluids I was losing, how much I was losing, because you're constantly wet. And it's like, is it sweat? Is it humidity? Yeah. Is it a river crossing? I don't know. Yeah. So I basically flushed all the salts out of my body. So like I was... I think I was spot on with my, my salts and that. So I was like popping one every hour, a salt, a salt tablet. So basically yeah. they just little salt caps that you carry with you. Yeah. And um, just like having a little taste of it before I swallowed it, like, does it taste salty? Yeah. You know? um, just get an indication of how hydrated I am. And if and if it didn't, I'd probably need to take one every half an hour for a few right. hours. Oh, is that how it, yeah. how it works? That's yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, and then um, obviously electrolytes as well. So, you know, spot on with those. And I just, I just felt like I managed myself so much better. Yeah, like yeah. I'm more, <laughs> like eight years old, eight, eight more years mature. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> so, I know, like, I can remember the photo when you were in the, it were in, you were in the, uh, the desert. I can remember a photo of your feet and it oh, looked yeah. like kebab meat. Yeah. Like, if you wet all the time, your feet must take a battering out there. Yeah, they did. I mean, I did struggle with my ankle, unfortunately. So after day two, because um, in the first two days, I did a lot of like speed walking and, and very slow running, which I'm not used to. And I think that caused a bit of stress in my lower shin. And that made my shin and my ankle balloon a little bit. But it was just, it was only pain. You know what I mean? I knew, I knew nothing was going to break. It was just pain. Um, but like, yeah, when your feet are permanently wet, um, you know, it's very hard for them to dry out and your skin becomes soft. And I did de-glove two toes. So, <laughs> so like, the, you know, this, around, the, around the toe, the, both little toes, it, the skin just completely come off. So, and it is pretty raw. But once you take a few steps, it's like, oh, it's like walking on glass. But then you're just like... God, you, that, you're just mad. You're That's just, mad. You're just, you're just, but I like to inform you, ladies and, ge <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, my feet are back in shape now. They don't look like really? hobbits' feet. Yeah, they, they just repair so quick. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, but it is, I've been back two weeks from the actual race. Yeah. You know, I stayed in Cusco, but, but yeah, yeah, the feet are totally healed. Yeah. You, uh, you must have lost quite a bit of weight if you... Yeah, I don't know if you probably recognise, but... How much, how much did you lose? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I weighed myself, actually, before I came here. Yeah. And... Uh, I was 83 kilos. I went out there 88, tried to put a bit on. And I, and I did go down to 80. So I actually lost. From the start of the race to the, the end of the race, I lost eight kilos, which wow. is over a stone. Wow. Yeah, that's... What is it? About 17 pounds, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. So you're about nearly a stone and a half then, aren't you? It's insane, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. So, obviously, there's, like, the difficult bits. You, you know, it's going to be a challenge. But what... What are you taking away from being in the jungle? What's like the beautiful sort of memories that you're gonna have? Oh, it's, I don't know. I feel like I've got this like, I think it sounds cheesy and that, you know, don't laugh, but you know. I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> you know, I don't know, it's like, I've got this fascination with it. I really have, you know. And um, I feel like, I mean, we did, we all went through hell in that jungle and we, you know, we put our heart and souls into it, you know, whatever happened individually to people, you know, it was amongst the fine bunch of athletes that put everything they add into it and uh, you know and so did i and i believe that i just left parts of my soul there in the jungle and yeah. they're still there you know they, they've got it's got hold of it yeah and I'll, I'll never get it back but i'm really cool with that because i like that thought that you know part of me is there yeah. left, i have definitely left part of me in there yeah you know? but it, it's an incredible place i mean 
just, you know, you're turning every corner or you're up a mountain or you're coming down a mountain, you're like, wow, look at that. And I wanted to take photos, yeah, but it wouldn't do it any justice. No. And I'll post them, I'm like, yeah, it's just a photo of, like, the valley and... But you just had to be there to yeah. believe it, you know, so I didn't bother. I've got some race photos coming from a professional photographer that I will yeah. pop at some point because they're nice. But... um but it's just an incredible place. I mean, we got to go through, I think it was day three, we got to go through a, a very protected place where, you know, the the people that live there, you know, are like just about indigenous and they have, you know, they don't even have a foot in the normal world. Yeah. And we got special uh, permissions to cross through that part of Manu National Park. Wow. Um, which was very special, you know. Yeah. And, you know, it must have been weird for them, you know, to see us running through with backpacks on yeah. and what they're doing. But they were so supportive and it was like clapping and cheering and even at one checkpoint, these kids come over to me and they got like this war paint and they put it on my face oh, and I kept it on me and yeah. I ran along with that until it all came off. And it's just, just really nice. The people are incredible. Yeah. You know? But yeah, definitely left parts of my, my soul there and yeah, got a lot of love for, for yeah. Peru and especially, you know, my new national park. Mm, that's amazing. So let's talk a bit now about, you know, you've, you, you're raising money. You know, you've not yeah. just done it because it's a jolly out mm -hmm. for you and it's something you want to, you know, obviously it's something you want to do. Yeah. But there's a reason, a purpose behind that run that, we, you know, that you've been running for for a, for a while now. Yeah. As we know, last year, you know, we was here talking about it, weren't we? You know, about, uh, you know, my late nephew, Niall. You know, he, he took his life at a very young age at 21. And then I've decided to put the, the 210 Nyla together, didn't I? To yeah. run 210 miles non-stop for, to support, you know, um, Young Minds, which is a charity that supports young people with mental health problems. So, and I really like the charity. It's quite small. It needs a, it needs a bit of a nudge. Yeah. Um, so I kept the fundraising going. You know, that was a success, weren't it? And we talked yeah. about it. And then obviously I, this was in the pipeline, so it just makes sense just to keep the fundraising going. And then... Um, attach it to this race and try and get up to that. We are at 8,600 and we want 10, don't we? Come on! So it would be nice to get that up to that 10 grand figure. And it's not all about money. It's about yeah. raising awareness and getting these stories out there. But, you know, with the additional help of the money, it, that helps, don't it? So. Well, there's a link now. If you look at the bottom of the screen, there's a link now for you to donate to the charity. However much you can put in, it's it's not a, about the amount. It's about showing support. Mm. So I'm asking, you're asking to stick yeah. your hand in your pocket. Just take two minutes and and just donate yeah. something. And then share it once you've done it. You know, share the story as well. That, that's what really helps. Yeah. You after this, just like you know, if you can't afford it, you know, we'll, we'll get it. You know, times are tough. Like you can't afford it, but I'll tell you, you know, do something different. Like right, I'm going to really share the hell out of this video. Yeah. Then that's my contribution. Yeah, so get it shared, get it liked, and uh, and, and get it out there. So Matt, mm. I saw you you wrote, you posted a yeah. question and was like, I'm not sure <laughs> if this is it. Yeah. Have I done? Um, is it done? And I don't really believe. You. <laughs> I don't believe you can let go. It's just, I didn't do it for attention, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I might have posted my latest profile, profile yeah. picture as attention. What, in, the, <laughs> in the hot yeah, tub of your, coming to America. With your sculpted chest. Yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> my wife can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> you too can have one if you go yeah, to the jungle. That's culture. what a man's meant to look like. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, behave. But uh, what was I going to say? Uh, whether you're going to do it or not, whether you're going to oh. carry on. Um, yeah, it's, I think, so I've done a lot, you know, I'm, that was like my 70th ultra marathon. Oh. But like, and I've done a lot in this country and I think I'm done for ultras in this country. I really have, I've exhausted them, you know, I've done the tough races around the country. Um, I, I've met some really good friends, I've had some good experiences and seen some great parts of the country and that, but, you know, I feel like I don't want to keep spending money doing it. It costs a lot of money as well. Right. You know, my, my own pocket, you know, this race alone, I've invested £6,000 in it. <laughs> out of my own pocket. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not come from any donations or any sponsor. Yeah. It's come out of my own pocket. Um, but it is at the end. No, no, it's not. No. No. No, I've got something in the pipeline for next year. Yeah. I can't, I can't reveal it yet. Yeah. Um, but is it a big one? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 
it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course it is. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but then but then after that for the future, I feel like, you know, like forty seven years old, I've got to keep using it. Yeah. Because if I have such a layoff of this, I don't think I'll ever be able to get back into it. Yeah. So I feel like I've got to keep using it to like you know, to maintain it. And um so maybe like like there's a lot of cool races out there around the world, like the multi-day stuff, the self-sufficient stuff, like, yeah. the, like the jungle. There's some really cool ones out there. And maybe I just like do one every year, one yeah. a year, and I use it as a, you know, a bit of a jolly and yeah. a tough experience and maybe you know, raise some money for charity at the same time and, and continue things that way. Yeah. Sounds yeah. sensible, doesn't it? Yeah, that's like, like coaching other people to do. Was that would that be something you'd be interested um, in? No, not really. No, no. You know, as you know, you know, I've got the PT background. Very tiring, you know. Yeah. I, I put my heart and soul into that and enjoyed it, and I, I've got the good times from that, and don't want to try and bring them back. But I'm um, quite happy to help people and advise them, you know. I don't want any money for it, but um, you know, as you know, my friend Nick, who's yeah. blind. You know, I'm one of his guide runners. I'll Which is always, amazing. I'll always continue to, because he's my mate, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll always continue to help him train. I'll take him for runs and I'll go to his ultras and support him and and guide him. But I won't be part of the race. I'll just yeah. turn up and, and help him yeah. you know, like his other mates do. So that, that'll be my involvement there. Yeah. I can honestly say I've never met anyone like you, like ever. Not just with like your running and stuff, but just how you are. It's like when we were training... I was never made to feel stupid. It was mm. all, you know, that, that, uh, that just care and like you're into it. You want to see other people do well. And I really, really yeah, think that's special. Do, yeah. You know, same with this race, you know, there was like, it's not just me that did it. There was like, yeah. you know, 20 odd other athletes as well, you know, and there was some DNFs and some people had to pull out for various reasons, but they still all did incredible. There was a 73 year old man in the field. Wow. Unbelievable. It was a um, Gabby lady with, uh, you know, amputee with one arm, and ran with the in ran with her in very heavy jungle and helped her up and down some of the hills and in the mud, yeah. you know, mud up to the knees. She, you know, she finished the long course as well. There's only yeah. six finishes for the long course, and wow. she was one of them and the only female. Oh, that's amazing! You know, so some incredible people out there, and that's another reason why I still want to be part of it because you, you know, I've made more friends. Yeah, again, and it's yeah. this, and only those people. Will know what that's really like. Yeah, you know, maybe one or two will watch this, and oh, they might get five minutes through and think oh, that's boring. But you know, if they watch it all, they'll, they'll, they'll totally get what I'm on about. They yeah. Really will. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, that, <laughs> as we come to a close here, talk us through the bit where you were running towards the final, like you, you, you the, the end is in sight. How's that oh, feel, yeah. and what is it like? So the last six hours. Um, Spent with another guy, um, Spencer, and um, I bumped into him at the bottom of the mountain. Uh, and it was like, after the mountain, there was another checkpoint, and then after that would be the, the end. So he said, do you fancy going up the mountain? And I was like, yeah, okay then, because like, it's, it's tough going. We've, we've nearly broke the back of this, you know. Yeah. So I went up there, and it was brutal. It really was. Like you got your hands in the mud, clawing oh. yourself up, and you know we both got bust ankles, and we get to the top. You can't even hang around at the top. There's a checkpoint at the top with water. There's that many mosquitoes and flies. Like you can't even take a minute. So it's like straight up there, fill the water, back down the mountain to the other checkpoint, and then it was a road section. And it might sound easy, but you know we've just done two hundred odd kilometers in the jungle, and we've got twelve k of road to do, and. Um, we just hit hard and <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's everything's just hurting, you know. So we did that together, and then we came in. We just had to turn our head torches on halfway down the road section because it was turning dark. And then um, we got to the top of the the road, and you, you switch backs down, and you can hear the village, you can hear music in the village, see lights, and I just felt incredible, you know. And we we're both like totally beat up, like you've been through yeah. a war. And then you come to the start, the finish line, and the kids come out of the village and they want to yeah. run in with you and that. And um, so they're following you in. And then you can just, you know, it's just, you know, you, you know you've done it. You know, if you dropped then, you'd be just like, you'd crawl. Yeah, you'd roll you your really way. Really, yeah. roll, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, oh, it's just, I can't explain how made up I was because it just took me back eight years, like, 
being the other side of that line, waiting for my friends to watch them finish, you know, yeah. congratulating them, but, you know, con you know, completing it myself was just, just unbelievable. And, and then, you know, so was the beer and the, and the, and the meat and potatoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah you were saying that. Line, it was incredible. Yeah. It's just, just wafted in. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely brilliant. You know, and a good after party and a ceremony put on by the villagers the day after. Yeah. Yeah. How long did you stay out there for? Um, so, obviously, I went out like a week before, get myself prepped. Um, and then you go to base camp the night before, you stay the night, and then you've got your five-day race, and then you stay that night and another remaining night in the village because you've got the medal ceremony and then drinks after. Yeah. Um, and that was fun. And then the sickly ride home through the mountainous roads <laughs> back to um, Cusco, which is... Another challenge, yeah. you know, trying to stop <laughs> yeah. from throwing up. <laughs> After exhausted and feel sick. No, everything about it <laughs> is brutal. Even the transport there and back again, even that's a challenge. God. Mm. Uh, it looked lovely, the hotel that you stayed at. And, and oh, it did okay. look lush, man. I thought, yeah, you deserve, if there's someone that deserves to be in a hot tub <laughs> <laughs> with a glass of champagne, <laughs> absolutely oh, amazing. Yeah. Oh, Definitely, brilliant. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, hopefully, then we're going to do another one of these when you do your next, yeah, your next one. We'll have a few more grey whiskers, won't we? <laughs> yeah. eh? I'll be thin by then as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, just for everyone who's watching, please share the video, give it a like, try and get as many eyes on it as we can. Um, you know, get get the word out. The more people that see it, the more people that know about the charity, and and the more people that might give as well. So, uh, Matt, congratulations. I love you. Get in. <laughs> Thanks, pal. And now we're going to have some curry. Yeah, he's cooking for me now. So um, <laughs> got to put that weight back on. There's only enough for two, so you know, maybe he'll maybe he'll cook for you guys one day. Who knows? Eh? Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you again next year for your next mental <laughs> challenge. Absolutely. <laughs> Cheers. Hey, that was all right, wasn't it? Yeah.